Hi everyone, welcome to day three of day four of my financial freedom series. If you have not been here with me this week, you have been missing out, but don't worry, the replays are available. Today is all about how I pay off 80K of debt before the age of 30. So before the age of 30, I was debt free. So today I'm gonna walk you through that whole story, how I got there, what I did, and so much more. So as you're coming in, say hello to me in the chat. I love to know who's watching with me. And I'm gonna load up my slides here and we are gonna dig right in, in a second. But what did you all think about the live yesterday about budgeting? I offered a free template for you all to use. Have you been using it? Was it user friendly? After we got off, let me know in the comments as I'm loading up my slides. And this is taking a little bit longer. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna see who's here. My mama is first. Hey, mom. <laughs> hey, Rochelle. We did miss you yesterday. Um, my mom was saying that early, like in the chat. Hey, Aunt Carol. I'm glad you all. Yes, honey. My Aunt Carol is watching. That's the inside joke with the honey <laughs> for us. Um, Rochelle is my petty friend because she know she trying to be funny with my title. This is telling about how I got there by the age of 30. I'm not 30 anymore, honey. I'm 36, about to be 37 in June. So I share this story all the time because whenever I say it, it's, it starts the conversation. So it got your t attention while you was scrolling. So I'm going to share my story. I done shared this story with Essence Magazine. Yes. Pine Saw, Business Insider, uh, Northwestern Mutual. I was a little bit um, internet famous for a minute for this story. So my slides are loaded. Let's get right into it. Disclaimer, again, this is for educational purposes only. If you want specific advice to your tax uh, financial situation, you need to consult your own CPA. I am not your CPA. You need to consult, consult your own CPA. All right, and this is the agenda for today. I am gonna go over these things, but first I gotta drink me some water. I usually drink a lot of water before the live, but it happened today and my throat is dry. So y'all gonna see me drinking some water during this live. All right, so my debt story, my aha moment that got me there as you are coming into the live, make sure you hit that like button. Um, and let me know who's in here, who's in this, who's watching. So just say hi in the chat to me. Um, how I, my budget to get there. I talked about this yesterday, but that was just a general budget on how to do it. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with that today. I won't be screen sharing like yesterday, but I'll be explaining it. My debt payoff method, um, my credit score during this process. Uh, because as you're paying off debt, it can impact your credit score and life after being debt free. So if you have any questions um, during the live, um, as I'm going through things, even if I haven't gotten to your question, if you, you've seen I'm going to be talking about credit today. Um, if you have a lot of questions about credit, throw them in the chat from yesterday about budgeting, throw them in the chat about the Roth IRA from Monday, throw it in the chat and I will eventually go answer those questions during the live, okay? All right, so my debt story, how did I get to so um, Majority of my 80, it was about $83,000 of debt was because of my student loans. I went to a private college in Michigan and it was expensive. I'm seeing 
my internet signal kind of dropping a little bit. So if I if I lose signal like I did yesterday, just wait for me. I will be back on trust and believe because I'm going to finish all these agenda items. OK, so I went to a private college in Michigan and when I graduated, I had over fifty thousand dollars of debt from that college alone. Um, the rest of my debt was I bought a used car after college and then I had credit card debt from college, not because I was on spring break or I was buying all the latest fashions because that was not the case. Um, it was because I had to be on survival mode. I paid for myself to go through college and my mom is a great emotional support, but I had to take on that debt to be able to go to college. And I'm glad I did. Um, I have no regrets about the path I forged to get to where I am today. I looked at it as an investment in myself, but I had to um, use my credit card for my car when it broke down. I had a hoopty and I needed my car to get to work. Um, I needed my credit card for books. So a lot of first generation students, when they go to college, it's not just about financial aid. So if you have children, grandchildren that are going to college soon, and if you haven't been, there are so many more costs than just the tuition and room and board. And even if they stay on campus, like I did, those dining halls close. And so you got to have food to eat after the dining halls close. So I would use my credit card for things like this. And I'm very disciplined. So all the debt that I racked up, it was because of the survival mode. And I worked. I've been working since I was 13 years old. Um, and at a certain point in college, I worked two jobs and I still had this debt. So when I say I know about being in survival mode and living paycheck to paycheck and feeling like you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. So with all that said and done, when I graduated, that's how I had about $83,000 in debt after a year or two. Um, so what was my aha moment? I see more people joining. Thank you for joining, Tawana and Vanessa. Hello, hello. Um, so my aha moment, like what made me want to pay off this debt? Now, I went to school. My major was economics and psychology. And I started my career right after college at a big four accounting firm. So money is always top of mind, but I never thought about living a debt-free life. To me, I felt like people always had debt, right? You just pay, you pay the minimum payments or you you pay off a credit card because my grandmother taught me well with paying off her charge card, her master card. You pay off your debt um, you're on your credit cards in full. But if you have a card note, it's okay. If you have stuff you're paying, it's fine. Just as long as you have a good credit score. Um, and that changed for me once I got involved with my financial ministry at church. Um, I was putting together a financial series event with other people. Uh, Glenda Bridgeforth is a notable uh, financial speaker expert. She's been on Elk Force several times, Steve Harvey. She was at my church and I was putting together events with her and Dorothea Kelly, who has been all over as well uh, on national outlets. So I'm working with these two powerhouses and we're putting on events. So, so again, this is me talking about finding your tribe. I found my tribe in church. So we're putting on, on this event. We invited Michelle Singletary, who's a no, another notable uh, financial speaker, to speak at our church. And she talked about living a debt-free life. I had never heard those terms before. Living a debt-free life, I thought you just manage your debt um, your whole life. And she talked about owning your paycheck. Like, you get to the point where you only have to pay your essentials. Like, you have to pay your water and light bill. You can't really <laughs> pay it ahead. Was just having a life when you got your 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 paycheck, it was all yours. And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. And she she uh, showed how we are so consumeristic. We we spend our money on things that we don't even need, and we're programmed to think we need these things with marketing from commercials. Now you got it on social media and all this other stuff, right? So it really got me to thinking about, okay. How can I get rid of this debt? Like, it just impacted me that much. Like, after that, um, hearing her speak, I was like, okay, debt-free. How to become debt-free? 
Now, prior to me hearing her speak, I was definitely working on paying off my student loans before I graduated, like not before I graduated college, but at a certain point. But I wasn't thinking about as paying them off as fast as possible to become debt free. And one reason that lit me, like lit a fire in me, is because I hated my job at the time. I hated my job. I was working 90 hours a week, and I am not exaggerating. My mom had to go pay my rent for me because I would just leave checks in for bills to be paid. Um, and they didn't uh, offer online rent pay. So it had to be paid in person. I never had, I never was home to do that. I never had time to do laundry. So my mom was doing my laundry for me. She would come to my apartment <laughs> and do all these things for me. In hindsight, I'm like, I could have just stayed at home because I was working so much and traveling so much for work. So if you're just joining Make sure you're hitting that like button. I'm sharing my aha moment and my debt story before we get into those methods on how to pay off your debt and talking a little bit more about credit. So if you have questions, drop them in the chat. I'm going to be getting to the Q&A in a moment. But I just, I work so much, right? So I was like, how can I get out of this job like as fast as possible? So I did in the, in the end, I did end up eventually leaving that job and going to a new job where I had more time to myself. But I just never wanted to be in a situation where I was just miserable. I literally hated my life because I was working so much. And I didn't know how to get out of it because I thought that's what I needed to do to be successful. Um, and so it was just it's it was just a long three years at that at that employer. Hey Jackie. Yes, yeah, shout out to my grandma. Hey Destiny Style, aka Shalanda for joining. So that is what lit the fire in me. Um, in my aha moment to pay off my debt. So I'm going to go back, get to the next point. Today's sponsor is me, booktasha.com. I am doing my sponsor plugins because I know this year I'm going to get some sponsors. I'm going to be getting paid from big companies to be speaking to y'all about finances because right now it's just me. Um, so with that being said, I want to let you know about what I offer. So booktasha.com, you can go there to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. If you are watching this and you're like, I'm motivated, I've been hearing this stuff for years, I'm not taking this step, I need more help, let me be the help for you. Book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. If you are just finding me and you're like, I don't know you like that, <laughs> well, you can book a discovery call to see if we would be a good fit to work with each other so you can reach your goals. Also on booktasha.com, it's Roth IRA 101. So if you were with me on Monday, we got into a great discussion about how Roth IRAs is a backup tool for me for my world travels. So I'm over budget right now, which I'm going to go so much in depth about my me being over budget traveling the world tomorrow and how I'm getting back to being a budget. But if I continue to do what I'm doing, I'm still good because I have my Roth IRA. I never want to pull from that, but that is an option for me if I just keep going crazy with it my travel and being over budget because living expenses and all of that. So go to booktasha.com if you want to see what those price ranges are. The, the Roth IRA class are, is only $29.95, less than $30. It's a live course with me going through how to open up a Roth IRA. I'll be showing you what, what index funds, meaning what investments I was choosing in my retirement account to be able to grow my money. And remember, Roth IRAs, you can pull out your contributions. So if you pull out your contributions, your earnings is still growing money on money. All right. So let me get to, yes, I will slow down, mother. <laughs> let me get to any questions um, that you have. Yes, you are petty. <laughs> hey, Vanessa. Hey, Tawana. I'm so thankful for my family that's in here. Supported me, my aunt Carol, my cousins are in this chat. Um, my grandma taught me well. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining, Jackie. And I will slow down. <laughs> All right. So let me get to the next point, budgeting. So yesterday I gave away a freebie uh, for you to budget. And that's the website to get your free budget template. Um, and I'm going to leave that up so if you are new watching this today, you can go ahead and put that into your browser and you can sign up to get the free budget template. But I went a little bit more 
I got more involved once I be, decided to become debt free. So what that means is, let me get on full screen right now. Um, yesterday I was showing like, you know, projecting what you will spend and all of that stuff and, you know, taking the time to put out your bills, write down what they cost, and then you putting down what you plan to spend on your non-essentials, like going to concerts, um, Netflix subscriptions, all that stuff, right? I really list everything I spent my money on. And so I designed that template to do, the, so you can do the same. So when I decided to, ooh, excuse me, to become debt-free, I, oh, let me take this off the screen really quick. Uh, when I decided to become debt free, I got more intense about it, meaning that I not only had that budget template going that I looked at, but I made sure I stuck to my budget, right? So I just mentioned right now as I'm traveling, I'm over budget. But when I was paying off my debt, there was no way I could go over budget because I was so determined to pay off my debt as fast as possible. So one thing that I did that I did not go over yesterday was I had multiple checking accounts for budgeting. So not only did I have that budget that I had on Excel, but I had three different checking accounts, I believe, three different checking accounts. Um, I still have three to this day. So I think back then I had three as well. So the three different checking accounts was so I could force myself to stay in my categories that I talked about yesterday. So one checking account, I was able to split my direct deposits from my employer. So one checking account was strictly for my bills, bills I needed to live, my rent, uh, my utility bills, things like that. Notice I didn't say cable. Um, I did need internet at my house because I did need to work from home because I told you I was working 90 hours a week. So they wanted me to be working like nonstop. So I did have to have internet to keep my job. <laughs> so that was an essential for me. So those bills, one account. So I had my bill set to auto pay. Now, even with my utility bill, I would um, not set that to auto pay because you know your utility bills fluctuate month to month unless you, I know in Michigan, the utility provider provides a budget for you to pay your energy bill. I was not on that. So that is the one essential bill I did not have in an account. Then I had another checking account for my debt payment. So if you're just joining me right now, I'm just gonna put this make a banner talking about my three uh, checking accounts for my budget. Oops, and I just spelled checking accounts wrong. Let me spell it. Go back over here. So second one was for my debt payment. So my minimum debt payments and the debt I was falling on with a debt snowball, which I'm going to go in depth in a second. And then the third account was for my living, right? My groceries, that type of stuff. So with those three checking accounts, the only money that I will pull out was from the, like, I would say fund money or my non-essential money, which... I will pull out to, I shouldn't say non-essentials because groceries was in there. I will pull that money out and put it into cash envelopes. So that's the difference between what I talked about yesterday and today. So yesterday, everything I'm talking about in this live builds off of each other. So with that being said, like I pull that money out and put it into cash envelopes. So that means I literally, what I budgeted for groceries, I wasn't going over that because that's the amount I took to the store with me like legit. Um, and I didn't really have that many groceries to buy with, with, <laughs> with as many hours as I was working. But during my debt journey, I did switch employers and I was I was at home cooking. Thank God I wasn't working so many hours as much. I had an envelope for um, like going out with my friends. So I did I didn't just stop my life. So there are other like financial experts. Like I know people always mention Dave Ramsey to me. Like, do I follow his methods and all that stuff? I, I pick from everyone. I mentioned M Michelle Singletary, Linda Bridgeforth. Dave Ramsey is someone else that I did listen to his podcast every day during my debt payoff journey. But I did not 
really subscribe to what he was saying so much. It was just more of the methods of the debt snowball and listening to people becoming debt free, which motivated me. But he goes into a lot of stuff I just don't agree with. So, yes, I was that strict. So, um, I actually lost some friends. Well, I guess they were my friends, but like legit people, we stopped being friends because I was so focused on, you know, paying off my debt. And they felt like I should live my life now because it's not promised. So me saying I it's not in my budget to go out and do certain things really was getting on their nerve. Now, I'm even to this day, I'm like, that's so stupid because I'm not I wasn't that friend. that's like, oh, my God, you should be paying off your debt, too, girl. You shouldn't be doing that. We all got that. I wasn't doing that. I was just like, even now, I don't have it <laughs> like I have no problem saying I don't have it to do what you are asking me to do. Like, if you don't like it, okay, bye. And so they went. Um, one of these people felt that instead of focusing on paying off my debt, I should focus on investing. That it was stupid for me to focus on paying off debt. And I'm like, okay, well, you do you and I'm going to do me. And once I became debt free, that same person who I wasn't even talking to no more, sending me a text message or you know DM at this point, Asking me like how I did it or whatever because she was still in debt. Go invest, girl. You told that's what you told me to do. <laughs> okay. So if you have any questions about what I'm going through, um, the material I'm coming right now, let me know. But I'm still, I'm still talking about um, budgeting right now. So I had the three checking accounts in addition to my budget template, cash envelopes, um, in addition to that budget template that I talked about yesterday. Also. Um, I had, I didn't just create that budget for the month and not look at it anymore. I had that budget on my phone. Everywhere I went, I looked to see what I can move around because life happens, you know, stuff is changing all the time, especially if you have children. I do not have any children, but things changes and you need to see like, what's my money doing? I had that on my phone. I was pulling it up all the time, right? So it wasn't something that I did once a month. Or once a week, I looked at and then I was done. No, it was a leaving, breathing document that I looked at all the time. Having going only with cash envelopes forced me to stay on budget. But I did, like I said, I think I budgeted. I cannot remember exactly off the top of my head, but I did set a budget for me to be able to go to happy hour with friends or go to a movie or whatever. But that was it. So I started doing a lot more things at my house. Once I got the new job, I had time to be able to cook or whatever. Um, and that is how I had some entertainment. Like, I do not believe on not having a life when you're paying off your debt. So I want to also talk about budgeted to, budgeting towards the end of my debt payoff journey and like how I budget now. So I actually budget for the year. I know. That seems like a lot and that's a little intense. Um, but every October, um, October is my time. October really is my new year. That's when I'm like looking to see how I'm going to spend my money for the following year. So this is always changing. But what I mean is, is that there is so much going on right now. And I'm blessed to have family that I love and talk to because some people don't like that family and some people don't have that, you know, have family events going on that they have to consider. And I, I'm blessed to have a lot of different friend groups, even though I drive them all crazy. Um, so I have stuff to do like every month, every other week, there's something going on. So I have, I set my intentions on how I'm going to spend my time. I can't show it to every birthday party. I can't show it to every baby shower. I can't show it to all my friends, kids birthday party. I can't show up to all my cousins birthday parties. I just cannot do it. Like, I would not have any money <laughs> or not have any time for myself. So my annual budget, I figure out the big things that are important to me and what I'm going to go to, because a lot of that involves travel. Even before I quit my job to travel the world, I still was traveling a lot throughout the U.S. So I was setting my intentions on what I was going to go, where I was going to go for the year. And I'm even doing that right now. So when I'm coming back to America in August, like I have stuff that I'm that's going on in a few months that I'm already back, right? 
So I have planned stuff and now people are mentioning other stuff to me and I'm like, I just cannot do it. Like I can't be everywhere at one time and I, I do not have the money to be able to be at what you're asking me to be at. I'm very honest with that. So when you are controlling your money, you are going to have to be be comfortable with telling people no <laughs> with your time and with your money. And my annual budget helps me do that. Um, so let me go to my debt payoff method. At first, I'll go to uh, any, any comments or questions. Right, you are funny. Yes, you do have to join me on more trips. Um, yes, uh, my grandma definitely taught me well. Needs works versus wants. Yes, you have to be able to. You have to be able to say no. Like if you really, it's like, is your what you have planned more important, or you know, going to some random event that you probably, you know, it won't end. It won't. Nobody will die if you don't go. Right. And that's what I mean. I'm talking about life happening. So I said that I'm over budget. I've been over budget since November with my travel. Me going over budget means that I would have to get a job sooner or I would have to come back to the U.S. But that doesn't make sense for me to come back to the U.S. because I can work from my computer and I can work from anywhere with my career. So, yes, I'm doing coaching and stuff right now. But if I'm like, OK, I need to get back to this this quick corporate money. I can do that working from my computer. So me going over budget, it's not like I am drowning in debt and I'm like, oh my God, I got people garnishing my, coming into my checking account because I owe them money. That means that I, at this point, I would have to get a job in April or I would have to liquidate some assets or I would have to pull from um, other places, right? So no, it would be liquidating my assets. So. I'm going to add my next topic onto the screen, which is my debt payoff method. So I just talked about, you know, your freebie and budgeting. Now I want to talk about the debt payoff method, which yesterday, Shalanda, you asked me about the debt snowball. I use the debt snowball to pay off my debt. If you are in a ton of debt, let's say most of it's student loans, because some people ask me about student loan forgiveness prior to this whole Biden administration that um, student loan forgiveness thing, um, which I'm not going to talk politics on here, but um, there's public student loan forgiveness. Like if you work in a certain, if you work in a low income area, underserved area, and you work there for 10 years, I believe you can have all your student loans forgiven, um, federal student loans. So I'm not the expert on that, but my friend is a teacher and I believe all her federal student loans were forgiven at the 10-year mark of her teaching. She teaches in um, Detroit. So it was forgiven. Um, and I've heard other stories of people who stick and work in the public low-income sector and they have all their student loans forgiven. The Biden administration is talking about something different. So some people are like, I'll just, I don't, I don't want to worry about paying my student loans. It'll be forgiven somehow, some way. To each his own. Um, debt consolidation is another question that I get with debt payoff method. Um, they are like, I don't want to worry about it. I want to take the thinking out of it. I'd rather have a company do it for me. I am not a fan of debt consolidation companies because a lot of times when people use these companies, their, their credit score plummets because the debt consolidation companies Will con they will um, first you have to go a few months without paying your your bills because they're trying to negotiate with your debt collectors, I mean with your debt collectors <laughs> with your uh, your debt owners. So that means your credit score is going to go down because you're not making payments, and then you're paying them a fee on top of your debt. So they're supposed to be negotiating to get you some of your debt paid off, like. If you have medical bills, they'll be like, oh, well, we can negotiate to get your 10,000 medical bill, uh, medical bill cut to 5,000. OK, but then you have months of not paying your medical bills to get there. And then you have to also pay them a fee for doing that. So I just it's so many different things that I don't like about that consolidation company. So I prefer to just do the old school way and pay it off one by one. Now I'm talking about debt consolidation, not student loan consolidation. That is not as bad as regular debt consolidation, but I just 
Yeah, even in people who are like, even if I got a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, what do you recommend? What up? What exactly what I'm saying? So um that snowball method, what is that? So it is listing, you're paying your debt according to the lowest principal balance. So let's say you have 10 credit cards and the highest one is $20,000 and the lowest one is $1,000 in the balance. You're going to focus on paying all your extra money to that $1,000 balance first. You're going to make the minimum payment on all the other nine credit cards. So let me know if that makes sense of what I just said. If you are if you're watching and you're really trying to understand that snowball and how it works, um, that is the main thing. So this is what I did. I literally listed all my debts. This is credit cards. Even if you if you are a person who has payday loans, that's debt. If you have afterpay, that's debt. <laughs> You have to list all these things out because I'm saying that with a smart because a lot of people are getting caught up in after pay and a firm and it's still debt, y'all. So you have to figure out like, how would you pay that off? Even if it's like, oh, I'm not paying no interest on it. The thing is, it gets you in this cycle of saying how much per month versus how much in total, right? And if you are not, if you are not good with budgeting and like I talked about yesterday, it chances are you're going to end up paying interest and owe more on what you pay. That's how they're making their money. They're not just doing this from the kindness of their hearts <laughs> to let people buy stuff and pay it off slowly. So that snowball method, you're listing your smallest, um, you list all your debts and you're working on paying off that balance with the lowest principal first. Like waiting as the plane just went by. Okay. And then there's also another method. I'm seeing some comments come in, so I'm going to get to those in a second. Another method is the debt avalanche method, which is <clears throat> one second. <clears throat> which is paying off your debt according to the interest rate. So you're focusing on the interest rate, not the balance of the debt. So you're like, my credit cards have 24% interest rate. I'm going to pay that before my student loans. Death snowball to me works better because it's the momentum, it's the psychology behind it. Because once you pay off that one balance, once you pay off that $800 in debt that you didn't even consider paying off for that $1,000, it gives you momentum to go to the next bill. And you take all your extra money and you pay everything on that principal balance to get it done. And you keep going and you roll and you roll and you roll. So that. I don't know who invented the death snowball method, but Dave Ramsey is associated to it a lot. And I remixed it for how he suggested it. And I rewarded myself every time I paid off a debt balance because I just do not believe in just like doing nothing with your life while you're paying off debt, right? You are already limiting how much money you're spending with socially, whether it's with your kids, your husband, your, your significant other, whatever, right? So to me, I'm like, once I pay this off, I'm going to reward myself. And so I did it with cash, <laughs> with cash payments. And I would go visit my friends. Um, they were spread out. They were spread out then. They're still spread out now. So I would hop on the good little spirit flight, go to Orlando, Florida, visit my friend Natalie and stay with her. I would save some money, book a spirit flight, go to New York, hang out with my cousin Rose, uh, my cousin. Hang out with my friend Rosemary and go visit my cousins that are in New York. Like I did these type of things to reward myself as I paid off my debt balances. So there definitely should be a balance with everything that you do as far as with your finances. So let me see what is next. So I'm going to get to that course in a second, but go off and see some comments. What um what do you mean by other forms um like um step, student loan consolidation? Let me know, Rochelle. Oh, okay, I see what you mean down here. So there's another way you can do. Um, Rochelle is bringing up a um good point which we do not agree on, <laughs> which is why it's gonna be so fun. We are on live together next month, Money Mondays. I'm gonna be going live every Monday with 
what some of my money friends and we're going to talk about money and Rochelle is going to be on talking about real estate. So her her um, question is, what about you taking out a HELOC refinance to pay off your debt? I do not believe this is a good strategy. Um, me and her go back and forth on this is because it's like I'm not going to re I'm not going to take out equity in my home to pay off unsecured debt. Like, no, I would rather you garnish my wages than me not. Let me have to take out equity. And then what if I can't make those payments? Then what? I lose my house. Um, I know there's other ways. I went to the extreme rush uh, before you come all in the comments, but I know where you're going with that. <laughs> we gonna talk about that next one. Um, woo, congratulations, Vanessa. So that's still loan that should be your federal should be getting paid off then. Yeah, it got it got you. Listen, never again. Listen, I'm telling y'all, I'm not in, agree in agreement with that. Do you decide based on the calculations or are you strict about not? I am strict about consolidations just because I looked into it. Like when I was at my debt, debt payoff journey, and even when I coach people through paying off their debt, the fees, it just doesn't make sense. So the, the cost part of it and then credit scores dropping. So I want to keep mentioning Dave Ramsey, unfortunately, because he is like so popular in the debt free, debt free payoff community. And like when people, if you Google debt free, Dave Ramsey is going to come up. So he talks about like, you don't need a credit score. doesn't matter. That is a lie, in my opinion, because you need credit to get a cell phone. So I, there's no way I'm going to let my credit score plummet while trying to pay off debt. I'm trying to pay off debt to improve my credit score, not have it go backwards. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't like the normal debt consolidation companies. Student loan consolidations is different. They don't they don't go that route. I did not do it that way because I'm like, I can just pay it off faster. I don't want people to combine it and make it into a little nice, pretty bow. And I can do that myself. Right. And then when I'm working with people, I let them know they can do it themselves, too. So. If you are like, that's great for you. I want to just say when I started off paying off my debt, my salary was at $50,000. Just to give you guys some perspective, that was gross. I'm single with no kids, so I was getting taxed. I also mentioned on the live, I have medical conditions. So I had medical stuff that was popping up on top of this debt. So it's it was a lot going on just besides making that. And when it's all said and done, and the amount of hours I was working with my salary, I was making below minimum wage. Like, I literally did the math. I'm like, I can go back to McDonald's and be making more because I'm just working so many hours for this $50,000 because I was getting so many taxes taken out. Um, so, Vanessa, you're doing that snowball. Good for you. Hope it's going well. <clears throat> So, yeah, you're talking about the rate. I don't think about the rate when it comes to that. So I paying on my debt off. And what I look at is the the balance, right? Not looking at if you want to go to the debt avalanche way or whatever, looking at interest rate. Yeah, it may make more sense. I'm looking at the risk factor in it all. Like if something happens and I just have to stop paying off this debt, if I lose my job, I would rather have my wages garnished than me mess up where I live. Um, I just I do not believe in taking it out, taking anything out of my home to pay off unsecured debt, especially with student loans. There's so many things. There's so many avenues you can do with student loans. If you are you find yourself in a bind, you can do um, debt payments according to your income. So if it goes away, it can, it can go down like there's different ways you can pause your debt snowball method versus when you lock yourself in to refinancing your house or getting out a HELOC. He like is taking out equity on your loan um, and doing it that way. I just, I don't like it. <laughs> you owe yourself two rewards. Yes. Figure out what it's going to be. And it was low cost. So let me say low cost rewards. Re Rochelle, I know. I'll wait for your response. <laughs> um, they are a must. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it's going to motivate you to do more. And keep going with the debt payoff. And then what I'm going to be going more in depth with tomorrow is um, getting your money up. Like once you see you pay off that one balance, you're going to find ways to get more money. 
when I had my um, when I switched employers, I was able to get overtime, which means when I started working 90 hours a week, my paycheck reflected that. Right. So I was this. Like by <laughs> by any means necessary. So one thing I talked about was um, my annual budget. So I'm going to just say that um, you can get the annual budget that I'm talking about with a course. So a few people have messaged me outside of the live, emailed me, and they're like, can you put more information on your slides as you're going through it? Can you do this a little bit more? And yes, I do all that on the course. Um, my spending plan. So how I said how I figure out what I'm doing for the year and all of that. Yeah, I do that in a course. It's through an Excel file because y'all know I love Excel, but it really breaks down how to think about your whole year, what you're going to say yes and no to. And if you want to say yes to more things, then you know how you need to how much you need to improve your income by or increase your income by. And it also has the debt snowball method in there. So if you're like, I'm trying to pay off debt with this, it has all that in there too. So you can list all your debt. It does the math for you. It also talks about how you should pull your credit score. I mean, credit pull your credit report to list all of your debt to make sure you're not list, missing anything. Um, so it's a lot in that course. So if you want to see how much that costs or if it fits for you, go to the website on the screen, courses.booktasha.com. Thanks to our sponsors. <laughs> Y'all, I am, listen, I'm not playing about getting this YouTube money um, with sponsors and brand deals this year, this year. So that's why you're going to see a lot more lives from me. You're going to see a lot more financial videos from me. It won't just be travel vlogs. So credit score. So when you are paying off debt, your credit score will change. Believe it or not, as you pay off debt, your credit score may drop by a few points. Now, it's not going to drop by the points to the extent that it would if you work with a debt consolidation company, okay, because it's going to plummet real fast the first few months. As I paid off each student loan balance, it was a drop like 10 points because that history, it wasn't immediate. It was after a few months because that history, um, that combined history starts to go off your um I'm like getting some time off your credit report history. So that is one way you will see a decrease because your average, your how long, how old your debt is goes into your credit score calculation. And let me put that stuff back on. So your credit score is made up. How often do you pay your bills on time? How old is your history? How often do you pull inquiries? I know I'm going fast. I'm only going to go back to the parts that I want to focus on. <laughs> And the utilization, how much debt that you have access to are you using? All that goes into your credit score calculation. Your history, how long you've had debt is such a big factor. So as you're paying off debt, your credit score is going to recalculate your history. So I had um, these student loans, like once I paid off the first one, let's just say it was like four years, I guess, since it would have been on there, it dropped off. My, my oldest account of with my credit is at 18 because my grandma taught me how to open up credit cards and use them only for emergencies, which I told y'all I was in survival mode for college. So me getting my hoopty fix was emergency so I can go to work. Me eating <laughs> after them dying of clothes was an emergency. Even with me working, I still needed more. I needed a, a balance. Buying those books, that was an emergency. So my point is, is that... Um, those my oldest history even to this day is from 18 years old but some of the 18 year old history started falling off um as i was paying off my debt and my credit score dropped just a little bit so keep that in mind um i've always had a credit score of 800 or higher since i was paying off my debt so i'm very diligent in focusing in on paying out with with, with um ways to balance it and pay or play around with making that credit score go up um, and then coaching people um, to get a house and playing and telling them these methods, uh, which I cover in the course, shameless plug, um, there to how to get your credit score together. Thank you, friend. I respect yours too. We just, I love our conversations about money.
<laughs> it is. So the cards I pay off are older cards. So with a debt snowball, it, you're paying off the smallest balance, whether it's a student loan balance or a credit card balance. Whatever that lowest balance is, you're paying that first. So um, that may end up being your oldest card or not. So, and also I wanna say, I'm not closing out my credit card. I'm just not. Like if I close all my credit cards, my credit score will plummet. And some people say, well, if you, if what was the point of paying off debt if you're gonna get more debt? I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Yes, different categories. I do get to that in the course. Um, debt categories, all of that. Because um, I understand there's a big difference between how you have to handle medical bills and how you handle credit cards and all of that. So my mom is, she been getting all this stuff for free, y'all. <laughs> so she is, um, in her, her journey in new and a cash envelope system and all of this stuff, um, she didn't get it for free. She had to put up with raising me. So that is not the easy method. <laughs> Easy task, I should say. Um, yes. Don't close the card out. So let me get to my next point in here. We're almost at time. So um, if you have not shared and subscribed to this channel, if you just stumbled upon, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like button. And you know, I'm going to say share the video. Um, on your social media, if you know, it will help people, right? If you know some people in your life that are trying to pay off their debt. And let me get to my last point, which is life after paying off debt. So I always say I paid off before the age of 30 because the year after I paid off all my debt, I'm like, I'm trying to think about the years. I bought a house. So I got debt. <laughs> so I'm not debt free. Um, I bought two houses. Um, so I'm not debt free at all. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I why it's not easy. Still not. Okay, uh, fellow Gemini. Um, so this is where I'm saying I pick from different people and what they say and their methods, right? So some people like be debt free, never get debt again, never get debt again. I do not believe in getting like frivolous debt, like going to credit card debt because you're just shopping, you're not paying it off every month, all that stuff. If you are not disciplined, I do not recommend. Say you are debt free, you pay off all your debt. You need to be using something to have something report to the credit card bureaus, right? Because you need, if you're renting, you need a good credit score to get an apartment. Um, some methods is like you can write landlords and, and explain why you don't have credit credit score. That does not work. As a landlord, I want to see that credit score. Rochelle, no, she is a landlord too. We want to see that credit score. Um, and you just need it for so car insurance, so many things. You need a good credit score. It will save you money. So when you pay off your your all your debt, you still should use should use your credit card for at least a subscription like Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Have that to set to pay and then you're just paying that $20 off every month because that's showing you wait till you get that credit card bill that's still showing payment, that's still showing after credit. If not, your credit score will start to dwindle because nothing's being reported. Yes, this is what I mean right now. Like, and this happened to um, someone else who's on the chat, I'm not going to call her out, like a credit card company will clo close it because it was no activity. So that's what I'm saying. Use it for something, right? Don't just pay up, pay it off. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to use it. So I'm very um, <laughs> good on your letter. Um, I'm very um, conscious about that with people with coaching people about paying off their debt. You still need to put something on those credit cards. That that history, once it's gone, it will drop it. And then imagine you have a lot of those drops, right? If you have these old credit cards start dropping, 15 points here, 15 points here, it's starting to add up. And you can go from excellent, good, and start dropping into the lower buckets with your credit score. So life after paying off debt, 
paying off debt. I bought a house. I bought a house that was a multifamily. I got started investing in real estate, which I'm going to go over more tomorrow. And that was because Rochelle uh, bullied me into getting involved in real estate. Um, I keep all my credit cards. All my credit cards are still open. <laughs> I closed one credit card um, because they were trying to charge me an annual fee. And I'm like, y'all don't offer me nothing to have an annual fee. Uh, close it. Um, and that dropped my credit score significantly because that was a old credit card. But I'm like, I'm not paying no annual fee for y'all. Y'all don't even give me rewards. Get out of my face. So I have all my credit cards. And with all of them, I have to, it gets hard to be able to figure out which ones to like make sure I have something hitting. Like I make sure the old ones have stuff going. But I travel hack. I took my mom to Hawaii for free off credit of my reward points. Um, I've been to like go visit friends in Houston and all that stuff for free, even now, um, off my reward points because I like have a method to how I'm picking credit cards and using my sky miles, using different rewards, miles or whatever to stay for free in hotels and flights and all of that, right? Um, even now, so when I went back to the U.S. to surprise my family for my aunt's 75th birthday. Um, I stayed in Orlando for a minute and I'm in Thailand right now. So I knew that if I'm flying to Thailand, the cheapest place to fly to Thailand from is probably going to be New York or California, the major hubs or Atlanta. Those major hubs are going to be the cheapest. So I'm like, I knew once I left Orlando, I was going to one of those three places. It happened to be San Francisco was the cheapest. So I'm like, OK. I have a really great friend of mine. We've been friends since the seventh grade that lives in California. Hit her up. Hey, I'm coming to California to fly out from Thailand. And it happened to overlap with her birthday. So she's like, so we going to Vegas for my birthday. I'm like, that's not in my budget. So <laughs> I'm not going. Like, I have to figure out how to make this work. And I was able to fly to Vegas for free, get my hotel for free, and and book my flight from Vegas to San Francisco for free off of my reward points for my credit card. Like I didn't pay anything. So when I say like, I really do believe in living a life and managing your debt and credit cards and all that, I do believe it. But I know I'm disciplined. Like I know I'm going to pay off anything I have in full on my credit cards, right? And I did not use my credit cards to do that. I use the reward points and miles from my credit cards to do that, right? So that's why I'm saying um, it's so important to keep the credit card history so your credit score won't, won't drop. But there's other things you can do with credit cards that are not so horrible. But you have to be disciplined. Like I tell people that before I go into how I did all that stuff for free, you, I'm disciplined. Um, so other thing, so real estate, um, I bought my house after that. I started getting more focused on investing. I did invest during my debt payoff journey. So some financial people say, don't put money into your 401k while you are investing. That is the dumbest thing ever because your compensation package is based on your 401k match. If you are in corporate, your 401k, the match they give you, that's leaving money on the table. Why would you not invest? It's encouraging you to invest, right? So I'm going to invest in my 401k. If I did not, because I pulled this um, a few years ago and I shared um, on social media, I believe on top of my head, I would have, I literally would have missed off. It was either 50,000 or 80,000. One of those numbers. I would have a loss in investing if I didn't invest while paying off my debt. Because when you invest in your 401k and Roth IRA, it's compounding, right? What you put in, in 2010 and you leave it in there, that money is making money on top of it from the stock market, right? So I was paying off, if I didn't invest in 2010, that money that I put in in 2010 is still making me money right now. So you can't, there's no way you can substitute that, right? So I put, I was investing the bare minimum in my 401k during my debt payoff journey, um, which was to get the match. So right now I was telling y'all, before I quit my job, I was maxing it out. I think it was 20,000, 20,500 you can put in your 401k last year. I put all of that in there. But when I was paying off my debt, I only contributed up into the match, 
right? So if it's 4%, 6%, put that in there because you're going to you're going to be thankful that you did years down the line. So, I got to maxing out my 401k after I paid off my debt and opening up my Roth IRA when I paid off my debt. So, I paid off my debt in 2016 and that's when I yeah, that's when I opened up my first Roth IRA account, I believe. One of these years, it's a lot of years to get confused inside no. I just told my friend Jackie this. I don't know if it's a millennial thing, but we always say what year instead of saying 10 years ago. It, do we just not want to realize that we're aging? Because I'm like, I was like 2016. I'm like 2013. I'm like, girl, that was 10 years ago. Just say 10 years ago. <laughs> but I want to. I don't want to embrace that something happened that long ago in my life. So I'm going to get there. I know some of y'all who are older than me are like, girl, get over it. You're only 36. I just had to tell y'all that. But I opened my Roth IRA. So I got so much more focused on investing after paying off my debt. I still was investing while I was paying off my debt, debt though. So investing became a focus. And then I really tried to figure out the life that I wanted to live. Because when you are in survival mode, you don't really get that freedom to think and like really like what can my life truly look like? You don't have to live your life to work. And that was like such a foreign concept to me. And I started reading about it, listening to podcasts about it more and more when I was on my debt payoff journey. So this is where the whole quit my job and travel the world start coming more of a reality reality to me once the debt was gone it was a, a the seed was planted um 11 years ago 12 years ago at this point um and i was just like i can't do that like it must be nice um watching a movie eat pray love to quit your job and travel like ain't nobody can't nobody do that that was my mindset i kept watching that movie because i was like mad at myself for having such a negative reaction aka hating <laughs> hating on the character is based on the true story that was doing it. I do not like this movie. To the, do not like the plot of that movie. I see a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to get to it in a second. Um, I do not like that movie to this day. Because the plot, no, it's just, and it's not a great movie. But I watch it so much because of the concept. And it used to make me so angry that she was able to quit her job. I was such a hater. So once I pay off my debt in 2016, I'm like, I went to South Africa. That was my big reward. Uh, for paying off my debt. I love to travel. Travel may not be your thing, and that is okay. Um, but travel was mine. And so I always wanted to go to South Africa. So the February before I paid off my debt, I paid off my debt. My last payment was in April. Um, I booked my trip to go to South Africa with this travel group because nobody in my friend circles was trying to go to South Africa. And I believe in finding your tribe. I've said that so much this week. So I'm like, okay, let me find how I'm going to go to South Africa. And I found a travel group to go with. So I literally went. This is what kicked off this journey for me to really start traveling the world, going to South Africa by myself. Like I was, I really wanted to go there. I booked it. And I remember telling my grandma, my grandma. The way that June. But I remember when I paid off my debt. I was like, when I was telling her I was getting close to it, I told her I was going to South Africa. And she was like, you going, you don't know nobody? Like, she was not feeling this trip. But as, <laughs> as the time went on, I kept talking about it. She was okay with it. But when I went there, I met like-minded women who were interested in traveling the world. And then I met a woman who was not with a travel group. She was in her early 20s. And she was traveling by herself. And I'm like, you came, like, you're not with a travel group. You literally are by yourself. Like, oh, my God. Like, I thought it was crazy. And look at me. Almost 10 years later doing the same thing. Yes, you a, you a petty bully. I do not. I don't have a set amount. I'm going to tell y'all, I have, um, I think I have, like, 15 credit cards. And I'm not ashamed to say it. And I I will count and put it in my newsletter how many credit cards I have. Uh, because I use them for different things. Right. I'm not over here overloaded, like, oh my God, I'm living my life. Everything's on my credit card. That's not how I live my life. But I'm like, okay, if I know, like right now, um, I could have came to Thailand on my mouse, but it was just one little glitch in the Delta system that I wasn't able to. But I know there's trips I want to take next year and I want to fly Delta. So I'm going to use my Amex Delta card to get the miles to get there. 
if I know I'm going places where I'm not visiting friends and I need to stay in hotels, I'm about to start using that Hilton Amex like no other, right? I'm going to use my old credit cards I've had since high school, um, well, since I turned 18, to pay to have something recurring on there. I don't have Netflix or Hulu because y'all know I already said I'm on my mama's Netflix. I'm on my brother's HBO Max and I'm on my other brother's something. So I don't be paying for those subscriptions. But I do have something recurring on those older credit cards for me to pay off. Right. And I do have business credit cards and I do have personal credit cards that make up that 15 that um, story. I do have two businesses just to give you guys perspective. Yes. Um, yeah, and I don't pay for I don't pay for a lot of stuff. It pays for itself. It is an annual fee. Um, and let me stop plugging Amex because they're not sponsoring my they not sponsoring this yet. <laughs> Um, yes, that's six percent match for that 401k. And that's the um, Make sure you are depositing, or I should say, um, contributing up to that six percent. Yes, if they have fees, <laughs> girl. No, you don't overstep. We do not agree. Listen, this live when we get on live next March. I think we, I think we have a schedule for the last Friday in March. It's gonna be so good. Y'all gonna have to see that. So the car, if it has a fee on it, I might let's talk through this before you close it. If you had that car for three years or more, pause before thinking about automatically closing it and thinking about what it's gonna do to your credit score. Like what are your goals for the next the next year? So if you are trying to buy a house. You want to keep that open because it's gonna. You don't want anything dropping your credit score, right? But if you don't have anything in mind like buying a house or anything like that, or moving because you will need a good credit score if it's gonna like put you into a lower category before you move somewhere and they pull your credit score, then don't do it, right? So think about what's about to happen next year in your life. If you close that credit card, do you care about it if impacting your credit score? That's what you have to ask yourself. Secondly, I closed my credit card that had the annual fee because they didn't offer me nothing. Like the annual fee, I think, was $50. And I'm like, I'm not paying y'all $50. Y'all don't give me no rewards. And I didn't even really use that credit card that much. I use it like once or twice a year. And I'm like, y'all don't offer anything at all. So I closed it. My Amex card that I have, the Hilton, it's $100 a year for to have that card. But guess what? If I spend a certain amount in the year, I get a free hotel night. I get um, I get triple points when I use that card. Like I've gotten so many room, free rooms off that credit card that $95 pays for itself. So that's what I mean. Like, what are you getting out of it? And I will say this, if you are in the debt payoff journey, don't even consider the re rewards. Like all of what I'm saying about miles, that is something to do after you pay off your debt. Like. Do not try to play that game of trying to buy something here and there to get that. No, it's a whole method to that. So if you are like, I'm not about to be debt free within the next year and all that stuff, and there's no, I'm not going to be able to take advantage of it. I don't care about my credit score dropping, close the card. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes, Rochelle, yeah, I agree with that. Assess the situation. It took me two and a half years. I actually would have been done paying it off sooner, but I bought my mama a car. And I that's what I wanted to do. So I I think I would have been done maybe eight months ahead of the time. Um, if I didn't buy my mama a car. But she didn't ask me to do it, it's something that I wanted to do. Like I just wanted to do it. And it was a, a Chevy Cruze that she's still driving right now. Well, she got into a car accident. I'm putting all your business out here. Um, so Aunt Carol, don't call for me um, in the comments for talking about your sister. But um, she got into an accident with that car and replaced that car. But it's the car that I bought her. It's something that I wanted to do um, at the time. She needed a car. And I'm like, I got a car loan and I got it. And I paid that. That car loan is what I ended up. That was the last thing I ended up paying off. So I could have been done sooner. But it's like, OK, the celebration of paying off debt or being able to do something so easily for my mom that's not going to like have a huge impact on me right i was just happy to be in that situation to be able to do that so 
this is what I'm saying. Like, I'm realistic about stuff that happens. Like I just said, I'm going to go harder to get more money coming in. That's my how I, how I look at it. So that's why when I say budgeting is not bad, if you see where your where your gap is, that means you got to go harder to get more money. And that's what I'm be talking about tomorrow. Yes, Rochelle asking all the questions that I asked. See, this is why when we go on live together, it's gonna be so much um, good. Yes, you better invest while you get out of debt. Like, do not just listen. Don't be listening to these people talking about don't invest. That's the dumbest thing ever. You should at least be investing in your 401k. If you do not have a 401k, you need to open up the Roth IRA as you're paying off debt and contribute a little after each paycheck. Yes. Yes. Uh, real estate and 401k. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Rochelle, I may just call you on. You may go live with me tomorrow. Girl, close that car. Close that card. The last question you need to ask, answer is mm -hmm. how long have you had the car? I'm over time <laughs> right now, y'all. So I'm just going to be going through questions and talking randomly. So if y'all want to stay on, stay on or until this laptop dies, because y'all know my plug situation in this Airbnb. It was a decade ago, Jack. You know, we were just talking about that last night. <laughs> this is what I love in the chat. Like y'all can be talking to each other and getting questions answered. And I keep talking, shout out Rochelle. So I, Agreeing with she, what she's staying with right now. We just disagree on certain methods with how to handle um, the debt consolidation. Girl, close it. <laughs> no, but that's it. If you get on her Netflix, I might have to get off of there. <laughs> Oh, I hate hearing that. So, Vanessa, I literally used to listen to that man podcast every day. That means the right time would be listening to that. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not listening to you, like, on that part. Again, I just wanted to hear about the death snowball and just hearing it every day was encouraging. So, Vanessa, it sounds like you're doing good. You asked me about podcasts yesterday. You know about it. You were in your debt payoff journey. It's, it's in Shalanda. Y'all are in your debt payoff journey. So, um, Tomorrow will be really good for y'all because I'm going to talk about how to pay it off faster with getting more money coming in. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ma, I told your business to miss company on the internet. <laughs> Thanks, Rochelle. Yes, cousin, what a blessing. <laughs> Listen, you threatened me on the internet. Everybody can see it. Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yes, yes, Sandy. Sandra, Sandra, yes, call the company and they will wait to see. How did I forget that? Yes, they will. And that's what I wanted to say. But I, in my story, I was telling y'all, I called the company, like they waived it for the first year. And so the next year, I'm like, y'all better waive this fee. And they told me no. And I'm like, no, <laughs> close that card out. I didn't care about the hit. So also to call credit card companies to negotiate the interest rate, late fees. If you have late fees, call these. Listen. My mom, no, she called me an old lady because I literally, when I would be in going into the office at work, I love calling these companies on the landline because no calls was dropping. And I was calling and asking all these, um, the annual fee. Can I get more rewards for this? Like, I listen, y'all, I do not be playing about getting everything I can out of certain things. Yes, call, 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 call. Yeah, like I said, they really did for one year for me, and then they told me no the next year, and I told them to close it. And I thought, like, once you tell them to close it, they they transfer you, and I'm like, oh, they gonna they gonna waive it. They was like, girl, bye, we gonna close this account. I was so devastated, like, dang, okay, this is going off my credit. But so yeah, so that's my life after paying off debt. So um, it's just more free space, and it opened me up to think about how to get more money coming in. So. Let's recap these last few days. First day, talked about saving. One thing I did not mention was the emergency fund on this. 
in my budget before I began my debt payoff journey. I did have three months of emergency savings in my savings account. Three months. Um, when I um, became debt free, I boosted it up to six months. Six months, which is what I have right now. And my emergency fund is in place, not for my travels, but for my um, real estate. So if I have a situation where I don't have tenants coming in and all that stuff, I got six months to get figure out a game plan and how to get more money. So I did have three months of my rent, three months of my DTE, three months of my internet, because I didn't need my internet to um, have my job. But if I lost my job, I guess I didn't need the internet. Um, I had three months of my essentials, my car payment, my rent, pay, uh, not my car, ton time, three, mo uh, three months of my minimum debt payments as well. Because I thought about if I lost my job, I still want to be able to, to make the minimum debt payments because I do not want my credit score to drop. So I had all that saved. And Dave Ramsey says a thousand. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't agree with him. It's other people, too. I keep mentioning him because, like I said, when you Google debt free, he's going to come up. Like, if you've never heard debt free term before this last day, if you Google it, he's going to come up. And I don't agree with uh, like the whole thing. I never read one of his books, but just listening to the podcast over and over and him say beans and rice, beans and rice. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Um, so I had back to my Monday. So save how to save to be able to travel, right? It would hit your goals. I talked about automated savings, Roth IRA. I have a course on that, booktasha.com. If you want to go live with me, not on here, it's on Zoom. Um, and I will really show you my money. Um, I'm gonna pick an account to show because I'm really private about that, but I have to show you how I picked the funds that I did, and so you can see the returns. So if you want to see that, sign up for the course, it's less than thirty dollars. Um day two was all about budgeting. I walked y'all through the budget, free budget template. I'm gonna go back so you can see this loan um course, this uh domain to get the free budget template. People had put in here that it was user friendly. That's free. It's no gimmick with that. You just got to put your email in to get that sent to you. And then y'all already know what we talked about today. So if there's no more questions or comments, yeah, you better call these companies. My, you do be listening to me. And thank you, Sandy. Let me start calling you Sandy because <laughs> it's Sandra. <laughs> All right, y'all funny. I'm about to get out of here. Um, and I will see y'all tomorrow at the same time, same place. I'm going to still, I'm a, uh, still Destiny style her saying, girl, share the video. Share the video to the live. The men who are watching who have not said anything in the chat, share the video on your timeline. If, if that's what you think will help people. If not, don't share. Send a link to people who are keep talking about paying off debt, send the link to this live so they can watch it. My goal is to be monetized on YouTube by April 1st, which means I need people watching my videos all the way through to the end. I need a thousand subscribers. So share the video. If you're watching on replay, leave me some comments. That helps with engagement. It helps the algorithm share my, more, share my video again out to more people. And <laughs> you'll be saying it. All right. And with that being said, I will see y'all tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. sharp. Bye.